Welcome back to the Mad Skills series on performance debugging. In this episode, we'll talk about what all this SysTrace data means and how we can use it to understand what's going on in an app. We'll look at what trace points are provided by the Android platform and how we can use those to understand how the trace describes what users are seeing in an app and where the performance issues might be. So let's jump in with an example. We'll start by opening up a trace of our IO scheduler app. Let's focus in on the app startup section of our main thread by selecting the first area showing activity and then pressing M. As you can see, there's a lot of information already provided by the Android platform that describes what's going on in the app. And ultimately, the most important part about performance debugging is understanding exactly what's actually happening in your app and making sure it matches up with what you expected. So let's step through what we're seeing here. The first big thing that happens during app startup is bind application. This is where the system loads your APK and your app's main components. You might see content providers loaded in here, and if you've overridden your application on create, you should see a trace point for that in here as well. Moving on to the right, the next interesting thing you'll usually see are these activity start trace points. So those represent the amount of time it takes to start an activity from the platform perspective. And on Android S, we've added perform create trace points underneath activity start that include the name of the activity that's being started. And these map very closely to the amount of time you're spending in your on create override for that activity. So here's one for launcher activity, and here's one for the main activity. Digging into these perform creates can really help you understand where you're spending time in app startup. This app is really typical in that most of the time is being spent in view inflation. And if you dig in further there, you can actually see which views are being inflated during that time. Fading snack bar and bottom navigation view. It's common to front load a lot of work in your application on creator activity startup. And so this is a great time to get critical about whether you really need everything that's happening in this flow and whether you're spending all your time wisely. Then, if we continue on to the right, we'll see more views getting inflated outside of the activity start. We'll also see an activity resume call and the corresponding perform resume. You might see other components in this area, like trace points indicating services getting started, and those tend to be pretty self-explanatory. Moving along to the right one more time, we'll get to the last stage of what the platform by default considers app startup, drawing the first frame. Now, depending on the specifics of your app, the time period you consider startup might end later on like maybe after a network request completes and new data is loaded in. If you want to see that spot in a trace, an easy way to do that is to call activity report fully drawn at the point in time that you consider startup done. In the meantime, let's take a look at these do frame calls. Note that the user won't actually see a frame until after the render thread completes a draw frames call. So we can scroll down to the render thread and take a look at where that happens. For the first frame, it'll usually be near the beginning of the app's render thread activity. So this work from here and earlier happens before the app's first frame is drawn. So in this first frame, in our UI thread, we can see the basic measure passes, layout pass, and draw call, but we don't have any more platform provided details there. Now I know from using the app that this is drawing a loading spinner, so it makes a lot of sense that this first frame is looking relatively simple, but we can see that the second frame is actually a lot more interesting. Recycler view provides a lot of informative trace points that can help us see what's going on in this long frame. We can see that the main recycler view in the app is being laid out, and we can see the seven create views for the rows in the list. If we look deeper into this first view, we can see each of the component views being inflated, including the XML files that go into them. And then at the end, we see the bind view call that we expect. Note that the later create views take a lot less time, despite in most cases inflating the same views, because there is some caching that goes on under the hood there. If I move a little bit more to the right, we can see where I scrolled up and down the page a little bit. As we'd expect, we see more frames being generated. We see RV scroll trace points, and inside those we can see where the new views are created due to scrolling. This is a great way to verify that your recycler view tuning is operating correctly and that you're caching the expected number of views. One other thing that's pretty cool is that we can also see recycler view taking advantage of the time between frames to do some prefetching which means they're creating and inflating some views proactively. Hopefully this walkthrough helps you understand how useful it can be to see what all of your code actually ends up behaving like when it's running on a device. There's one more super useful thing I want to mention about reading a trace, which is threading. This IO app doesn't have a lot of inter-thread dependencies, but some apps do, and SysTrace can be really key in understanding how the work happening across different threads relates to each other. So first, it can be really useful to highlight a critical section and review what's happening in other threads during this time. In places where other threads are doing work in parallel, you'll want to think about things like whether that other thread is doing blocking I.O., represented as these yellow sections on the CPU state row here, 
that could interfere with higher priority I.O. on your main thread. Android doesn't generally have robust I.O. prioritization yet, so this type of thing can definitely impact your timings. If you have any thread pools, you'll want to consider whether you're creating a reasonable number of simultaneous threads for the devices you expect to run on. Low-end devices can have as few as four cores, and even low-priority background threads will eventually get scheduled, so sometimes it makes sense to wait until your critical work is over before kicking off parallelism. Last, I want to call out a couple specific threads. The heap task daemon thread is where GCs happen, so if you're seeing frequent work in that thread, you might be making excessive allocations, especially in long-running tasks. We don't seem to be seeing that problem here with just the one GC. And the JIT thread pool is where JIT compilation happens. If you see a lot of compilation like this, you should review whether your app is in the correct profilable and compiled state for reviewing performance, which usually means compiling it in the speed profile or speed compilation modes. If your app isn't compiled on the device, needing to run the interpreter will use extra CPU and give incorrect timing information compared to what real-world users are seeing. So those are a couple of good threads to keep an eye on. And that's about it for today. In the rest of the series, we'll talk about using sampling profiling alongside this SysTrace data in order to get an even better understanding of what's going on in your app. And we'll take a look at the Perfetto Trace Viewer for when you need more system level information. Thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>